All right, dreamers and builders, we recently acquired this beautiful microwave right here, the Light Base 600 from Be Quiet. Now, I am swapping my personal PC that is in the NZXT H6 Flow over here, which I absolutely hate, into this beautiful, beautiful case right here. So, this build video is going to just be a swap and then we're also going to be getting into the cool specifications that come in this be quiet case that i think are actually pretty impressive and some reviews around the internet right now are giving this case a five star review so i'm going to give you guys my honest opinion about it and let's rip right into it Now, first off guys, we actually ordered the Be Quiet Lightbase 600 DX and they sent us the LX. So real quick, we need to take out all the fans from the PC case. This version I think is actually like $30 more than what I ordered and Amazon accidentally sent out this one. So it's whatever, it leaves me with a little more work, but I guess I got a more expensive case. So All right, you guys, so now that we have taken out the fans because we ordered the DX and somehow got the LX with the pre-included fans, which I'm not complaining about, got three or four free fans at a $30 value, but we are now going to be getting into the build here, take out the glass panels, put them somewhere safe, we're gonna take out this one, and the second one here just has some two screws on the front to hold in the glass. One. And I always like to use these to keep all our bolts. Nuts and bolts, screws. Sorry guys, I also work on cars a lot too. But anyways, we now have that off and this I believe should pull up. Yep, comes right up. This is such a small glass panel. We're gonna also put this somewhere safe. So now we are actually going to start with our fans here. So. And this build, you guys, I personally want to do a build with positive airflow because I already know the components of my PC stay very cool. We're going to have a 360 millimeter radiator. I have a huge heat sink on my 4070. Um, so we're going to be doing positive airflow. If I ever want to switch it, I can literally switch it with the click of a button. But I've personally noticed positive airflow has been uh, amazing for me to help with the amount of dust that collects in my PCs. I live in the high desert, there's tons of dust everywhere, and it's just, I think, at this point, a necessity because I've seen a PC run for like eight months with zero dust in it when every other build I have running for like two hours or like five hours collects dust. So, I mean, that might be a little exaggerated, but honestly, that's how big of a difference I see. Um, and then with temps, I don't see a huge difference. So we're gonna take our fans here and I'm gonna get a little closer show you guys how these snap on. They use a similar mechanism to the uh, Lee and Lee Uni fans, which is pretty cool, and they're only $40. These are the iColor Interstellar fans. Um, V3, V3, you guys. So I've ha I have the V2s, and I like them, so I figured let's go with the V3s and see what they're all about. Um, so yeah, let's connect these together and then throw these in the case. So we're going to line up essentially this side. We're going to need a better focus here. Yep, we're going to line up this side with that end, this side with the screws or the pins. 
they kind of fit in with the blocks as you can see there too. These already feel a lot smoother, smoother than the V2s and you get quite a bit of pressure to pinch them together. And there we go. They kind of needed some extra push, honestly. They were a little wonky on the sides, but I can see all my pull tabs too, which I didn't want to tuck any in there, but I also didn't want to take them off because your fingers can scratch these fans really, really easily. So we're gonna go in the back side here with our pins facing the right direction. Gonna push it. Oh, that was a little sketch. So yeah, you want a firm grip. It's kind of hard once you are holding both of them and then you gotta give it quite a bit of pressure to squeeze it together. There we go, you guys. So now on, I want to go with the bottom of the fans or what I think is gonna be the bottom. In this case, we're gonna attach on, or no, it's actually gonna be this side. We're gonna attach on the little controller that we have here. And we're gonna have intakes, and not exhaust. Kinda make sure it's snug as you pull sideways, which can give issues, I feel like sometimes, just making sure it's flat down as you pull. as you push there we go so that definitely needed a good amount of pressure but we got the driver and line these suckers up i feel like i want to push them towards the front a little bit just because it's going to look better in the build like that just because the back is going to be so crowded with stuff that i think this will look better Oh, there we go. All right, you guys. So, I'm gonna go in that direction. I'm gonna slide it right on. Okay, and like I was saying before you guys, this is like pretty tough to push this one over, it seems always. There we go, that one really snapped. So yeah, there we have it. Let's head back, taking off all the panels. I'll leave the glass panels on for now. And let's unhook all our power supply cables. Because it is a mess back here. And this I think is gonna make it the easiest to start pulling things out. So yeah, my experience owning the H6 Flow, I think it was great airflow, but it just didn't have too much wow factor to it. And it honestly kind of, I feel like became like the McDonald's of PC cases after a while. Um, like the McDonald's Happy Meal for PC cases. I think honestly, I had one of the cooler looking setups in the H6 Flow. 
I mean, of course, there's going to be builds that are way more insane than mine and like water cool builds and just more expensive builds. But for what I made this thing look like, which I'll probably show some B-roll of that right now, I think I made it look pretty dang cool. Um, but yeah, easy enough. We got our power supply out. So that's pretty awesome. Let's just do undo every connection we got back here. We're gonna be leaving this AIO in the case, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm actually gonna be giving this case to my little sister for her birthday, and I'm gonna be giving her the cooler that is gonna come with it. And I'm gonna redo this cable management for her, so that's why I'm undoing pretty much all the screws, or all the uh, five pin connections and connectors for the fans. And so we can also kind of get out our power supply cables, which is again, just a heap of a mess. We have our Lee and Lee controller for the streamer cables in here too. So we got to get that out of here and that out. Now we're onto the motherboard. case around get the glass panel out of the way put it somewhere safe this is our GPU sag holder as you can see as I just moved it it sagged let me bring it back up it falls so that was kind of cool to have in here and have that little area in this case for that. But be gone with it. I'm gonna do these. So yeah, you can also, I guess I'm not giving you guys a step-by-step -step video on uh, like a PC build or dismemberment right here, but I guess it'll just show you how long it takes to uh, take apart a PC. And then I'm also gonna be giving you feedback on what it's like to kind of throw this all in the be quiet case. So we're gonna put this somewhere extra safe. Put our screws in here. We got three power supply screws. Honestly, I feel like I should blow off the motherboard. All these connections are coming out pretty easy. By golly, there's a lot though. See, some of these, I've seen horror stories where you pull out the whole port where it's like soldered to the motherboard. That's a nightmare. So that, USB connector, it's giving me some troubles. So I'm gonna get over here and just finagle it a little more. There we go. And that's off. I believe we have everything disconnected from the motherboard. Get the cooler off. Nice. Set this to the side. This is for the deep cool. And now we're just gonna unscrew it. Lay it on it. Lay it on its back. Let's see. I think we're gonna for now. We're gonna leave it in most of these. There's lots of room back here. Make sure we don't smash anything. But just in case something is still connected to the motherboard, we're going to lay it flat on its back here. Take off all our motherboard screws, put it in here to keep everything safe. 
honestly those little bins help out so much the little organization bins are so helpful i have like six different ones just in case i have a build going on or i'm in the middle of something then i can just know where all the miscellaneous screws were and not be i don't have to go put them back in the specific box they came in wow thank god that didn't fall in there oh no part of our Lee and Lee streamer cable a little plastic holder fell off too get that back on let's keep going at this motherboard that top screw in the corner is going to be a pain without moving this AIL, but we can do it. We just need to switch to a longer head here. Take one, put it in here. Hopefully this one reaches. I feel like it will. Yeah, we're good. Got it. Now, our CPU. This is a tough pinch, but I got that off too. So, we're going to take off the CPU cooler, the AIO, and we're going to wipe it down with some of our thermal paste cleaning wipe, the Will Tree off Amazon. So here we go. Here comes the cooler. Let's see how this thermal paste is looking, you guys. I'm pretty curious. Hmm, what's up with that? Oh, one of these was on upside down. That's funny. Now, you guys, if your PC has been stagnant for a while and not running, definitely run your PC for a few minutes before you take this off. I should mention that at the start of the video, but in case you were following steps or something, so I'll probably mention it there too, but in case your PC is stale or super old, your thermal paste needs to be kind of warmed up. So let's see how good of a thermal paste job I did on this PC, how much is left, and what we are looking like. So we'll give it a good wiggle. Oh, we're looking amazing, you guys. Look at that. That's wild. So quite a bit on here, quite a bit on the CPU. We did do a spread. You can see it survived. We might, might have pressed it down a little hard, but it survived pretty dang good. So I'm happy with how that looks. Definitely gonna be repacing it, but let's go ahead and clean this up first. Might take a few of these cleaning wipes, thermal paste. Now this can be used on your GPU and your CPU. And they're super cheap on Amazon. They smell pretty good too, which is awesome. But you don't ha have to care about what you get these on uh, because the uh, anything that's left on it will just dissipate like alcohol. Because I'm pretty sure it's mainly just alcohol. You can also use isopropyl alcohol to do this cleaning. That looks pretty good. See how well we can tuck that off to the side here. And let's try to clean up our CPU so we can take it out.
And the more thermal paste, the better, you guys, because that thermal paste will transfer heat across the whole entire mass of the thermal paste. So, you know, too little is a problem, too much is not an issue, even if it spats out on the sides. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Mr. Easter, but he does some pretty wild videos with thermal paste and CPUs and other type of stuff like that. So it's pretty dang cool, you guys. And we are pretty much clean, you guys. I'll get a close up on that. I'm gonna get one more wipe. Probably one of my favorite CPUs. It's quite amazing. Let's get this bad boy over here. Oh, I thought I scratched the front, front of that case. Thank God I didn't. Thank God I didn't. Totally thought I did. I scratched it on the table. So, now, we have the case facing down. So, we have both cases facing the correct, the correct direction. We're going to hopefully just be able to pick this up while being careful with the AIO. Not picking it up by the RAM. Might as well take our Wi-Fi antennas off, double check for a screw, which I found. So let's get out the screwdriver again, take out the screw. Before you just start yanking on stuff, you guys, you always gotta double check. Do some double check in here and there. Well, that was unfortunate that those rolled off the table. Then you guys are laughing at my, my me right now, okay? Because my stutters, like I just did, and me dropping stuff. Don't be laughing. Because we're not going to drop anything more. Not on wood. Hopefully this comes out kind of nice and easy. With the mess of cables in here. Come here. Give me, man. Give me my uh, motherboard. Mother... I have the mother, you guys. I am transporting the mother. One other thing. So, we have where we're placing right here. We're also going to take off any pins that are not going to be used, which actually they aren't. Because you guys, pro tip, take off any motherboard screw spots that you aren't using because they could damage the back of your motherboard. So we got it swapped, you guys. Nice. Woo! So we're also going to be taking all the power supply cables from this old build and setting it with our power supply unit, an 850 watt Corsair right over here. So we're going to do that real quick. And we're going to get rocking and rolling back on the build. Definitely got to clean this PC though. Because like I said, it is going to my sister, you guys. Pretty dang cool. I know she's got a very old, ugly looking PC case. And this thing also has a ton of fans. So I think it's going to be pretty dang beast. It is messy Bessie back here, you guys. Nice. That is all our cables. Look at that. Crazy, you guys. So many fans in this PC build. So we're going to tuck everything under here. We still have all the original panels that come with the case. Throw our back panel back on.
take Megami out of here. Bye, Megami. If you guys haven't seen Jujutsu Kaisen, watch it. So good. And now, real quick, you guys, we're gonna tie off this cooler, probably just like up here or to itself. Right here would be perfect. So it's not, or to the back of the case. Gosh, I can't make up my mind. So that it's not flopping around all crazy. I'm gonna tie it off right here. That plate is looking pristine. This air looks so good for how old it is. Should work amazing too. So I'm excited. Let's give that to my sister. There we go, you guys. We're gonna clean this case another time. We're just gonna get it out of the way for now. Get our glass panel back on it. As you guys can see, it's pretty crammed in here. So please support me so I can get a new office. It means the world to me. Damn, I don't even know how this thing is still so heavy. What the hell? So as you guys can already tell, hold on, my ACD, OCD. All right, so as you guys can see from this angle, these infinity mirrors look absolutely insane on these interstellar V3s from iColor. So let's go ahead and screw everything into our motherboard here and then get rolling. But this is what I think is gonna work the best. So let's roll with it. And let's screw, screw, screw away, you guys. Now, probably for this build, I'm not most excited for the PC case, honestly, because this is a super expensive PC case. I don't think it's an amazing price for any of you guys to buy what I... All right, let's hang out at this angle while I screw in the rest of these motherboard screws and talk about why I decided to buy this case and why it might not be the best case decision for you guys out there because I feel like a lot of you are budget builders and this case is $160, no included fans, um, which is just too much. Like I, I would never have bought it unless it had something unique to it, like the microwave look, LOL, um, that it has. So I just want something unique. That's what I, I want my build to be, my personal build to be unique, to kind of like have some flair to it, to kind of showcase stuff that people haven't seen before. So I think that's the big reason why any of you should honestly buy this case is just for wow factor. It's honestly a ripoff. There's lots of cases that can fit ginormous GPUs. Um, the fans that it comes with, I don't even think many content creators were super impressed with. Um, case design, it is pretty good and it is does have a lot of future proofing, but I'm gonna say it again. I honestly think the only good reason to buy this case is just to have something unique, AKA the microwave. Um, so I guess we don't have a screw right there. Let me just double check real quick guys, make sure all our screws are in that we need and we're good to go. Woo! All right, so one thing I do notice is it looks like there's barely any room to feed cables through the bottom and maybe that's to hide them better. So let's go ahead and head down to the bottom of the motherboard here and plug in all our cables that we need to before we install and start working on our AIO. Again, these fans are already looking insane, but if you guys come down to the bottom, see how like there's like, that's all the room you get. Like it goes up more, but uh, 
these are the regular mounting spots for this case. So I'm not sure what's going on here. I mean, there is a little bit of space behind like the motherboard, so it might be able to pull through, but we're gonna have to check that out. Now we might have to take back off our motherboard and feed through our cables first. And I hope we don't have to do that, you guys. So again, I feel like this is not gonna be like a whole tutorial on how to build in this case. It's just me swapping cases and showing you guys really the aesthetics. Now, I personally wanna feed every cable I can through the bottom here. So let's go ahead and test them all out. That one was pretty snug, didn't really worry me. go for number two. Oh yeah, that fits easy. So yeah, I guess it's just to hide the cables better, which is kind of cool, but it's a little worrisome with some, some connectors. But honestly, not as bad as I expected. Here is going to be another cable we got to feed through. Let's go ahead and pull that through. There's our SATA. Cables for all the RGB, I'm assuming, that we got to go into the motherboard with. I can go ahead and flip this around so you guys can see what we're working with. So, I think these are the LED cables for the bottom of the case. Well, these are for mine my interstellar fans. What's cool too is as you guys can see here, fully backwards compatible with uh, cableless um, setups. So I guess that's another huge advantage of this case. If you want to go cableless, snag one of these. Snag a cableless microwave. I know you guys, I'm not funny. I try to be, but I'm not. So don't laugh. You don't, there's no, there's no reason to laugh. Okay. These are honestly gonna go into the controller, which we can just plug in right now. This, let's go into the front for our controller to be in the front panel. And let's connect our fan. Think, let's connect our RGB. Think. Woo! Now with all this excess, I actually really wanna tie this back up. So let's try and clump it together here. best we can which I think that's gonna do it there we go cool beans now we're gonna do the same thing with these two that also are coming from our interstellar fan. So go with the back one, we'll go with the front one, line up the two pin and the single. Let's group all this up and let's tie it off. I need to wipe off the rest of that thermal paste on my hands, you guys. How come none of y'all told me, hmm?
Thermal paste somehow gets everywhere, you guys, I swear. It's freaking ridiculous. So we got the cables we needed to feed through. We got everything else kind of situated. Not super. But we're gonna actually pull through these and push all this back to right there. Okay, now in with our power supply, you guys. In with the power supply. Boom, fan on the outside, fan looking clean. Looking clean. I thought this would be dirtier. I don't think we need to blow it out. Tray fits all right. The tray kind of feels weird. Let's get our handy dandy box of screws. Time to go to work. We got four screws to put in. What's nice too about our electric screwdriver, you can kind of just like with it, just go do something else while it's screwing. Like it's pretty handy. You don't have to focus on screwing as much. You can grab the next bolt for your next screw while you're screwing. Nice. So let's get all our cables back in here. This big mess, big old mess, big old heaping mess. Look at that, you guys. Look at that. Oh, so much, so much going on. Okay, so what the hell? Let's start off with, I guess, the controller because I want to get this kind of tucked away behind everything first, find a good spot for it. So, SATA connection, SATA and PATA. Use the top one. Use the farthest one from us to leave the most connections for everything. Now, this is where it gets tricky, you guys, because we need to tuck this somewhere good. Like maybe right there somehow. Maybe like tie it to this corner. And hook up this. This had a connection up top here. And then we got one more for the bottom one, I believe. Might be mistaken. Yeah, I think I am mistaken. Yep, because they daisy chain together. So yeah, there's just one connection for that. Honestly, actually, it might be clutch putting all these up top. I think that's the move, y'all. That's all going to go up here. Oh, that's going to be, this looks so bad. 
but that's essentially what we're gonna do. Um, now we need to connect this controller, I think to the motherboard, hopefully we have ARGB on our motherboard. So let's feed it through on the left here. And now, let's take all three connections, our motherboard, CPU, oh no, motherboard and just CPU, uh, GPU, because we can't daisy chain. There's lots of room to plug in these things. Also, you guys, you can plug in these cables in your PSU before you put it in your case. Like I said, I'm not doing a ton of things in the right order. Kind of just nitpicking this build as we go along, seeing what it's capable of, which it's cool. You have a ton of room to plug these in, which in some cases you don't when there's a... Uh... When there's a lot of room. So we're gonna go for the top two. Leave our CPU in the spot right here. We're gonna double one is going to the CPU, single one's going in this CPU slot. PCIe and CPU. I don't know why I plugged that one down below. I'm gonna put a one up higher. That bugged me. Okay, now we're gonna figure out how we wanna feed these cables through. Um, I know, let's just go both through the side. I think that's gonna look terrific. Or, maybe through the top with the uh, GPU one. I think I'm feeling that. I think motherboard. Let's go through the top and let's put like the whole thing out there. And this is gonna go through the top. That's cool, actually in the top of this case, um, we're gonna have some extra room for these to go up there, so that's cool how many slots there are for different motherboard configurations. I think they kind of thought of a lot of things for this PC build or for this PC case, but they did not like execute amazing, but they had the ideas, they had the right intention, but the execution wasn't insane. All right, you guys, so there we have it. Pretty much everything where it needs to be. Oh, except for this got pulled back. Honestly, at the bottom where you feed through cables, that has a lot of room too. So Loki, I'm kind of impressed. You guys, we have so many cables to plug in. I can't get over how good these fans look though. Okay, so we are getting pretty dang far, you guys. So next part of this build, what I wanna do before we get our AIO in here is just start plugging everything in that I can. So let's go ahead and do this CPU. 
And let's go ahead and find a spot for the uh, controller to plug in for the fan and RGB, which we're gonna have to probably feed through the bottom, I'm now realizing. Which is gonna be fine. So let's go ahead and pull these back. Feed them through the bottom. I want to keep the cables as clean as they possibly can throughout this build. So I'm going to do whatever it takes to do that. No matter how long it takes, I want to be very minimal cables because with your PC laying flat like this, I feel like it exposes a lot of cables that come through the side right here. So I'm going to take the USB and pull it through the bottom. We're going everything through the bottom like I said before. So yeah, we have these through. All of these should honestly be on the right side, except for this. So let's get these over to the opposite side. They are not where I want them. A little snug. Well, you know, this might just have to do for this one, but we pulled the other one back. So, I'm gonna get it through here quite far. Make sure it's flipped the right way. Probably pull it under all these. Let's get it into our JUSB plugin. And, That doesn't look too shabby. Now, let's find all our, G, our RGB pin header connections, which I think we're just looking at this one. Right there. Let's get our audio on this side and our F panel over here. This L connect controller is probably gonna have to be connected to uh, daisy chain to a RGB because I have no more RGB connectors down here. Yeah, so we're going to be pulling this through the back, coming back here. So we're just going to put that into the controller. I don't think it should matter whether it's in the motherboard or the controller. And let's push this under. Get our audio in. There. And, oh, well, this F panel really shows how far we pulled it. Let's see if we can hide that a little better. And system fan for this one. All right, that's everything down there. Now we got to get that last header that I pulled to the back. Where did it go? It's in the back. I know it's back here somewhere. Here it is. We can feed it up here. Get 
it up here. And through. We're through. And we're going to pull from the bottom up. Oh no, that's not going to look good. We're just going to tidy it on the side right here. That will not look good. We're going to squeeze it through right here to make it even tighter. Make sure we don't force this in here. Went in perfect. There. Look at that. Motherboard. Clicked. Nice. Okay. So that's in, that's in. I think we're pretty much set up to put the cooler in. I'm going to leave this pulled through. And everything's looking pretty clean for the, the cooler now. So yeah, let's go ahead and rock that, you guys. Lay this flat. This build is already kind of turning out, looking insane. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited. Let's get some room because we are going to be using a really nice price. I think we got this for 70 bucks for a 360 millimeter AIO, you guys. Um, let me in here. So yeah, 360 mil, I've used thermal right quite a bit. And if you're running a push-pull setup in your PC, you guys, you can also take that into account on buying a more expensive cooler. So if you want fans for your PC and you replace the fans that are on your cooler anyways, then you might as well run push-pull. That's what I, I said earlier. I run that in my Lee and Lee O11 Visions because I'll just take these fans, flip them to the back, and we're good to go. Frozen Infinity. God, it looks so good, you guys. Look at that. Woo, sheesh. Bam. Get out our little brackets. Throw this to the side. I love the turquoise too right here. So clean. I've used this black version of this. Now we're using the white. Oh my God, the white looks so good. But, oh, we do have a, a little pull tab on our mirror. I thought they might've forgot it and I thought that was scratched. So thank God if that is not the case. So yeah, we are gonna be swapping this to the back. Or actually, no, we're just gonna be taking these off because we can't fit a push pull, I believe, up top. Or we can test it out, but I'm not thinking we can. Let's see, you guys. If we can do a push pull up top, I'm a freak. Okay, so we're gonna check something out real quick, guys, to see if we could possibly run a push-pull. And 
we can. So I think we're going to do it, you guys. I think we're going to run push-pull. Let's go for it. So we gotta still got to flip these to the back of the PC. And we got to still take our thermal right or our interstellar eye cooler fans right here pop those together and screw it onto the pc so we got to flip it around we got to add these on let's get going Forgot a screw on this one. Got a few. One more, I think, on this one. So I believe these are pushing air into the radiator. So we're essentially just gonna flip over the radiator here. We're gonna reinstall them on the other side, or I guess we're gonna do it from this angle for you guys. So yeah, now we're just gonna reinstall them on this side, pushing air in, or let's see. So we have intake, intake. So this is actually gonna be pushing air out. So we're actually gonna be flipping them to this. Yeah, because we're going to be pushing through and pulling out the other side. It really doesn't matter the setup, but we're going to go for this setup. I would actually want to pull air in through the radiator. So you know what? Let's exhaust out the the bottom here and let's run this as intake because we're going to do intake on the other side so fresh air from the outside running through the radiator through the pc and out the bottom so we have nine intake three exhaust four exhaust i like the sound of that you guys we're going to go with that setup so we're going to run intake actually on these I ran this scenario actually in my uh, height Y60 and I was able to get 10 degrees cooler by pulling fresh air into the radiator and pull it, pushing it into the case. Now it'll rise your GPU temperature, but our GPU has a huge heat sink so I'd rather sacrifice air in the For the CPU heat than the GPU heat, because CPUs usually overheat first. So we're actually not even going to be mounting these on this. So I don't even know why I did that. Completely scratch that, you guys. We're first going to be installing these again. So let's go ahead and do that first. So we're going to be popping these in pretty quick here. Make sure our tabs. Well, again, this is a bummer, I think. Oh, yeah. Get our tabs out the way. Make sure we're on the right side.
one tab stay off for me please there we go go and now we're actually going to be installing these on the front here we just need to set this we're going to be going reverse pulling air in so yeah we flipped that to reverse you guys we have it up on reverse I want to hide this down by the back of the PC so it's going to go on this side. Nice. We're in. So Radiator is going to be sitting this way. So it's going to be this way in the PC. So we have the fans over here. We have the back of the PC on this side. So let's go ahead and peel our back stickers. Look at that. Beautiful. Let's set these on. I need some extra screws actually from in here because these ones we need to save for the other fan. Thermal rights, thermal paste, not the biggest fan of. Set this to the side. Don't need those. We're gonna be going AMD. Set this in our build. Now we're gonna be looking for extra long heads which I hope they include, maybe not. No, no. So here's what we're gonna do, you guys. I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack in the comments. I don't think I have screws that can reach. what we're going to do we're going to take two we're going to take four actually we're going to pop them on the tops and the bottoms and we ain't going to do the middle there we'll go to up top oh come on there's the thread I just have to pull it back a little bit let's throw on one more Them on pretty tight. Okay. Now we're going to have to share screws for these essentially, but 
This is ready to go in the case. Of course, I always pull the wrong side. No, I didn't. I didn't pull the wrong side. Let's actually get you guys a better view of what's going to go down here. All right. So, I'm going to lift this bad boy up into the case. Very careful we don't hit our CPU. We don't have to worry about much else. We just don't want to hit our CPU. And we're gonna set it right here. We're gonna get our fan, take our screws out. We only need two of them, because right, we're, we're sacrificing some. Gonna get the back of the fan. Just gonna do the top two. Whoa, that was crazy, bottle flip. Top two. Yep, so that's where we're gonna go with them. All right, so pull this back a little bit. Slide our fan in, line up the holes. It's really tough to kind of hold this all in place, honestly. And it's on the CPU, or it's on the hole. Let's go. Screw. Oh, that's the wrong spot. Is it? Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll just get it in. Perfect. Good thing that's on the back of the motherboard. Or I mean the back of the PC because I missed a screw back here. I want to turn the other way. Okay, so screw this one in next. There we go. Just takes a second before you make threads. Nice. Definitely want one more in. There we go. Screw that all the way in there. Damn, that's tight fit, you guys. That is a tight fit. We're good. We got it. Now let's slide our next fan down. Dump all these out. We're gonna definitely want this cable to run to the back which kind of screwed up on this side. So let's go ahead and fix that before that causes me too many issues. That was one thing I did not pay attention to. Just gotta feed all these down this now. So we're pretty much through the back of the case. Okay, so we might have to flip this fan real quick, you guys, or else we're hopeless on these cables. So that's why I'm here, you guys. I'm here to do it first, so you guys know what to do right and wrong.
Okay, get out of here. Okay. So those are all off. Holding this up. Pretty much just going like this. And now we're done. We just needed that all to be on that side. Might as well try to feed it through to, yep, through feeding it through to the back of the PC. Lots of room to do that up here. Love it. One of the easier cases, I will say, to push pole setup. And wow, there's lots of advantages. Having just lots of ports up top here makes it so easy to run a push pole setup. That's crazy. Okay. Back at square one, you guys. Back to square one. Now, second one coming through, cables on the bottom. Ooh, we made it too tight, I wonder. Slide in there. Okay, so that means we have to set up all three, which is gonna be tough, before we can screw it on. This is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Honestly, having two people right now would kind of help out, but we're gonna go for it. Anyways. So, it must have a thread. There went the thread. Oh, there's one thread left on this one. Damn, I didn't want that to fall. Okay, there's two. Let's get a third ready. Okay. So I think they're all up. This is gonna really take some strength here. I like to hold all these up for as long as I need to. Or we can just slide them up. So that's fine. Okay. Holy, holy, holy guacamole, guys. We did not need to do a push-pull setup. Um, but we're doing it. But we definitely did not need to. But, oh well. Let's keep at it. We're doing a push pole setup. We're committed. Going lefty on the screwdriver, you guys. Oh, yep, yep, this is fail. This is a fail. OK, 
Okay. Pull both of these up. Come on. This one's really struggling. There we go. Get in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. And the third one looks like it's going to fit perfect also. Wow, they all sting. Look at that, you guys. Wow. Woo! And there that one fell. Cool cheese. Let's get this one up. threads on this one. Might need to push a little. See if we can scoot. No, no. Yeah, we're missing a thread right here. But that's fine because we're going to be able to fit in, I think, minus four bolt, four screws. So we're gonna be messing screws anyway. So that's gonna be perfect, be fine. So yeah, we only have three screws left, I guess. Which, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which doesn't make sense because we use two, four, six, eight. Oh, one, two, three, four, no, this makes sense. We have eight left. Screw the bottom on so we have a snug fit. So we get all the air we can to pull through this system. Through the radiator, really. Just snug fit on that radiator, which it looks like these fans do have a really nice fit. Probably not the most efficient out there, but we're going for looks, baby. We're going for looks. Look at that. Holy moly, you guys. Woo! Now I think it's everybody's favorite time. Thermal paste time, yo. All right, so I love Arctic. Hopefully I have a little Arctic thermal paste left. I'm gonna check this MX-6. We're out, I need to throw that away. This one I'm guessing we're out. Yeah, so we are down to just the uh, thermal right, which is fine. I just feel like their thermal paste isn't the best, but it doesn't really matter. So now, I don't know if you guys know how I like to spread my thermal paste, but essentially I wipe it with my finger with some plastic over it. This way it doesn't get on anything or anywhere or even a spatula that you have to clean. I do use have a spatula. We can do a P-dot method, but... I want to spread this thermal paste across this whole PC. So let's just throw it on there. Make it like a swirl, like an ice cream swirl. Come on, get all on there. Now take finger, make it pretty smooth. And Let's see how even we can get a spread on this thermal paste. See, like I said, this thermal paste just doesn't spread very well. I don't know what's up with it. It's so like goopy together. Um, it's like it's already dried out, honestly.
Usually I go for a nice even spread everywhere, but we are not going to be able to do this with this. With this thermal paste, it is just not, not my favorite, like I said before. So no spread tool really works for this thermal paste. I should have just went with like a PDOT method. But that's fine. That is plenty thermal paste. And I have a single screw holding up the base plate, which goes to the old cooler, because I wanted to install the motherboard without installing, uh, or put the motherboard in the case without putting on the, the bracket first, just to make sure everything lined up correctly. Now we have our AMD stuff we got to put on. Honestly, it's crazy how much room and space there is up here on this case. Like, these are some key points that I feel like a lot of people haven't gone over yet, is there's so much room up top. And it's great for situations like this, when you forget to plug in stuff, or you need room for a push-pull. Um, yeah, wow. That's nice. It's honestly super nice. This is going to go... And all the con like hidden cable areas is also super clutch too. Notice there's so many places to pull cables into the back. So many more compartments, I feel like, than you usually get with a lot of cases. And I can't believe I'm fitting my whole hand under here, you guys, to put that in. That's crazy. We're definitely going to hide this up top. Nice. Okay. So let's get that AIO on there. Get a nice peel. There we go. Going down like this. Oh no. 
Thought that was on. There we go. So I go down until I feel the slightest bit of like, I have to really give it effort. Like there. Sweet. Damn. This is crazy, you guys. This is insane. So I guess this is the one cable that we need to feed somewhere too that I kind of forgot about hiding over here. So we're going to struggle to feed this to the back real quick. We're also going to open up the back, check out our situation back there. And we're going to install this GPU vertically, which is going to be pretty cool. So yeah, I feel like a lot of people don't mention how big of radiators you can fit in this case without running into RAM clearance issues. Look at that, you guys. There is no, look at all the RAM clearance. Oh my God, that's crazy. And then same thing, I could show you some more angles. Like this is what I was talking about. Look at all of that down on the bottom, the screw in and like, I'm just impressed. I, I think this was a better, Better side to do the push-pull radiator, which it would have been funny to do a push-pull radiator with tubes coming from the bottom, like below the motherboard. That would have been weird. That would have been a cool idea, maybe. But I'm honestly pretty stoked on the way it's turning out. So we need to get these into the back, into the controller. PC is coming up. And we're switching to the back. Okay, you guys, so this is super tricky with how I need to feed this. I need to be able to see them from right here. Oh, I found it with my pointer finger. Just got to grab and pull. Feed. There we go. Okay, got one. Fed how I want. We just need the second one. I can see it. Grabbed it with my finger. You guys, this is crazy. Usually this is so hard. Things like this. But there's just so much room. In this case, this is the Lightbait 600 too. Like, I wonder... Maybe the 900 could even be better or worse. Like they kind of just maximized space on the 600 in places that like they needed to. Um, I really hope you guys blow up this video. I mean the world to me. So again, let's go up top here and just plug in our fan and RGB. Then we have another fan RGB I'm gonna do on the bottom while we're back here. Fan RGB. And this actually four our fans up here which we got a lot going on all right you guys not only does this AIO match that GPU so perfectly but this turned out exactly how I wanted it to I'm so happy we got it on our dream build mouse pad Everything is looking so good. I'm just gonna wipe down these infinity mirrors that I accidentally touched earlier because uh, I can't stand any smudges anywhere. And luckily this microfiber doesn't scratch. But we're gonna then do a peel video on TikTok or something on vertical filming. But let's go ahead 
make sure this thing boots up. I can't wait to see how insane it looks. I'm so stoked. All right, you guys. Should we go glass panels on? We should go glass panels. No, 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 no glass panels. We're just gonna do a head-on view. this a little bit done with that got extra screws this PC okay you guys big moment of truth we're grabbing the power cable. We're plugging it into the wall. This is gonna, this is gonna, this is the big moment, you guys. This is crazy. Hopefully I did everything right. Uh, that was never taught. It all lies in this moment right here. GPU is in. I believe we powered on. Now, moment of truth. This is a crazy power button. Let's go, you guys. What? Oh my God. Oh my God. So we need to plug in CPU fan into the CPU fan, but holy shit, does that look insane? Pardon my French, you guys. Oh, wow. Damn. That is crazy. No boot lights, which is good for the motherboard. But there's no RGB on the, uh, on the cooler, which is super weird. So, yeah, we're going to have to figure out what's going on there. And then, yeah, we'll be right back. All right, so we booted back off the PC. I didn't realize I didn't put this on the CPU fan, but for some reason, this header for J Rambo isn't working for the CPU. So we're just gonna go ahead and swap it to a different ARGB or maybe daisy chain it in the back here. Let's see what that does. So pop this off again real quick. And we're gonna feed our RGB. We can see it. You can plug it into the RGB controller on the case. Let's try that. Nice. That's closed. Slide in, there we go. Nope, that didn't slide. Sometimes it's tricky to slide this bottom piece in. You're like, yeah, once you make sure all four slide in and then we screw it on. God, that's tricky for me for some reason. Okay. Okay, we did that. 
Now we're going back flat. <sighs> okay, attempt number two. See if all fans in the ARGB works. Let's go, you guys. Booting it on. Power. There, they're all working. Woo! And as you can see, the fan speed did not ramp up like it did the first time. Well, there it did, but um, not as fast as the first time. So yeah, this is pretty wild, you guys. Intake. Intake. These at least should be set forward. Oh, and this isn't even on properly. There we go. Yeah, wow, these fans blow like crazy. And then these oh, should be set to intake, which they're reverse. So these are pulling. Let's get out a piece of paper just so I can show you guys. This will work fine. Some of the part of the user manual. So. So intake, intake, exhaust, intake, intake. So these need to be flipped. These are good. These are our exhaust. Which could also just be flipped to intake. But we probably shouldn't do that. Maybe these should be intake, pulling cool air, pushing out that way. So we need these to pull, these intake, that exhaust. Booting down again. And let's go. Hopefully we can get our fingers in here. So that's gonna be forward. This one up here, which we're going to get to with the screwdriver, was not, that was intake and intake on that. So that doesn't make any sense because this is not set to that. So we just switch sides on that one. Now the only left to do is the bottom. So now we're exhausting, intake, intake, exhaust. I think I like the way that's going. Let's test it out. Going for the boot up. Oh, that, that boot up design is crazy. So now we're definitely blowing in, which makes no sense. These are sucking out. Oh yeah, that's what we wanted. Intake, 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 exhaust. Perfect. Wait, these are sucking. And these are sucking. No, these are... Hmm. Yeah, these are sucking up top. So it makes no sense how that switched. Oh, why did it restart? So yeah, we don't want these intake, you guys. We want these pushing air into the case. This is our exhaust, intake, 
exhaust. Now these are these are intake. Can't exactly tell what's happening. Hmm. All right, you guys, you are not gonna believe what I did. We have the fans up here. Two of them are the wrong direction. So we are gonna very carefully, very, very carefully take off. Yeah, as you can see, I really screwed the pooch here, you guys. Look what I did. Look at that. This one's supposed to be taking in air. I put it in the wrong way. So from Think about this correctly. This is gonna be pretty dang hard to do. But, so this is the right way. These two are the wrong way actually. Cause yeah, we're gonna be pulling air in. So I gotta flip both of those. Pretty much just gonna have to take like this whole thing off. So stoked, but let's get, let's get rolling. Just gonna have to hold it like the whole time too. Come on. All right. Now the question is, do I want to take all these screws out? Probably. Or else my life's going to be hell. So let's go ahead and do that. back fan is also kind of blocking it so that's no good so let's try and pull it forward <sighs> oh gosh this back fan is really really not wanting us to go forward here something isn't Oh, that, that is the screw, you guys. Oh my gosh. You guys need to be telling me these things. So now, flip. And flip. Oh gosh. Okay. Now I guess we restart this process, you guys. Wish me freaking luck, yo. Wish me all the luck you guys got. It's already being finicky. But we can do this. Just gotta believe in me, guys. There we go, we found threads. We're threading. We're threading. We're threading. I don't know if you guys saw that TikTok where the hobo's in the light fixture. He's like, we're glowing. We're glowing. That's how I just felt, okay? That's how I just felt just then. Honestly, for some reason, I wasn't too irritated that I had to flip these around because like, this case is awesome. And I was like, oh, there's so much room up top. I don't even have to worry about 
my Ram 6 about flipping these fans around. I don't even got to stress it. I don't even got to stress it, yo. I don't even got to stress. Ah. <sighs> Start threading. Just give me every thread possible. Somehow, there's stickies on that. Oh. All right, you guys, sorry, I got distracted. Let's keep going on this. Okay, we got the fans flipped. They're snug. Everything's looking dialed. We got lots of sticky peelies to peel off. There's one sticky peely I actually saw under here that I really want to peel off. But I know it's bad for my ADHD. So one moment, guys. Okay, you guys, I love the power button too on that. The power button is beautiful. Love the way this boots up. Oh my gosh, it is just looking insane. I feel like the fans are pretty loud, but that's whatever. Um, I think it's the thermal right ones. But anyways, you guys, I love the way this PC build turned out. It is absolutely insane. These, inter uh, these Interstellar iColor V3 fans I think really make this build look immaculate uh, too bad I didn't have one extra one to throw right here but we have nine in the build and we have three more thermal right fans for a push pull setup on our radiator so I hope you guys like the build let's get some money shots and yeah I absolutely love this thing um, it was a blast to build in there's so much room everywhere from behind the fans plugging in cables to behind the motherboard it has lots of cool features to it. Uh, I'm surprised we fit a push-pull setup and I ran into lots of pickles in between getting cables in, flipping my fans after I already set up the radiator. So yeah, you guys, this thing was a blast to build in. Super impressed with the way it looks. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. All right, you guys, there was one more thing. We needed to connect the ARGB for the GPU. Now we reset the fans back here. So we have the correct airflow. We have intake, 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 and exhaust out the bottom. 
or no, intake in the bottom, intake in the side, exhaust out this side, exhaust out the back. That's how we have it dialed. We have nine intake, four exhaust. I think it's the perfect setup for positive airflow to reduce dust building up in this PC. And now we have everything booted up. We have signal RGB. We held our little button here for five seconds to switch to ARGB from what it comes with, all the different color settings we have. So pretty sure we're booted. Let's boot on here. And now we are all good to boot up the PC. There we have it, you guys. My completed build in the Be Quiet Light Base 600. Um, funny thing is we ordered the DX and they sent us the LX. Pretty goofy, but it's whatever. So yeah, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this full build. I think it went spectacular. Um, let's wait for our RGB to boot up here. Let me sign in real quick. We're gonna cut that. So yeah, we have ARGB set for the PC. Logged in. Let's wait for this to load. And then our RGB should load onto the PC. There we go, you guys. Now, we need the streamer cables to adjust to all of this too. So, let's check out why they aren't going along with everything else. So our streamer cables are now not wanting to change, but we have everything else changed. We're gonna need to re-plug these in, probably on this top port on the motherboard, but there we have it, you guys, looking dialed. All right, you guys, so now we fixed that cable, should be able to boot up this PC and it will turn on perfectly. Love how that orange does that when it boots up, you guys. Looks so good. Hell yeah. Now let's just wait for signal RGB to boot. It is looking dang good, you guys. Woo-hee! I 
love that. To actually get some good angles. So we can see everything in the PC here. Wait for all this to load up. There we go. Everything is working the way it should. That is crazy. That's wild. Infinity mirrors are looking insane, you guys. I don't know what you think, but they're looking pretty dang good. This thing is looking like a light box, yo. Like a microwave on fire. Damn, y'all. Looks really dang good. I love the way this turned out. I'm not sure about the black fan in the back, but check that out, you guys. That is crazy. Woo! God, this thing looks so good. I love it. That's honestly insane, you guys. Just getting like... The GPU, too, just looks so perfect in this build. Okay, guys, so here we have the PC set up here at my personal desk in my office, and I think it turned out absolutely amazing. We traded that black fan in the back there for the uh, one of the thermal right fans that came on the AIO and then we swapped that black fan and I tried to hide it back here so as you can tell you can't really tell that that's a different fan but also if you head over to this side uh, the fan was flipped too so that we're pushing air through the radiator on our push-pull setup coming through the PC we have six intake three intake right here so nine total intake, and we have four exhausts to make a little positive air pressure to help reduce the amount of dust that's going to collect in this PC. Um, I will also go through some of the presets for you guys here too to show you how all those look um, because this PC, I think, just looks so dang good. It is unreal. So yeah, let's, let's do some of those presets. Um, So unfortunately it doesn't connect to the streamer cables, so I just have those um, set to white so it can kind of match any color that's going on in the build. And then if we hold it for five seconds, that's when it will change to the uh, addressable RGB from the motherboard. Um, yeah, you guys, I'm super happy with the finished product. I feel like this PC case is not extremely big, but when laying on its back like this, it is pretty huge. Uh, so keep that in mind if you guys want to build with it, and I hope you guys love the video. I hope you guys think this build is pretty dang cool because I think it turned out amazing. And yeah, you guys have a great day.